Hey guys, welcome to The Process. This is Chris and this is Melinda joining me for the fifth episode. Melinda, what the heck are we gonna talk about today? Well, today we're gonna talk about business goals and what kind of business goals should I have? I feel overwhelmed in making them and actually achieving them. And yeah, that's it. All right, you guys, stick around. All right, welcome back, you guys. All right, let's get deeper into this. I'm just gonna put my little okay. therapist cap on, my business consultant cap. Let's talk about your business goals. What do, you, what do you mean? Give me some more information. Give me some context for why you're even asking this question. Well, it's difficult for me to know what to do on a daily basis when, besides having my client work, so set that aside, when I'm trying to grow my business, I don't necessarily know the next thing to do. Okay, so besides doing the work itself, you want to know what should you be working on? Yes. Is that right? Okay. All right. I got that. Mm, have you mapped out your goals for the year? No. Have you watched our episode on scaffolding towards your goals? No. Okay, so I'm going to tell the audience right now, there's going to be a link down in the description. Watch that video first, and then we're going to go back to this. Okay, so it's... Was that the same one, the short one on goal setting? Yeah. I watched that one, okay. but I felt, I thought that there was a deeper dive into this. So, so I did watch the one that so you said. So th now let's dive deep into it. Did you do the, what I told you to do in that video? To make my goals? Yeah. But I, that's where I'm stuck is I don't know what type of goals are good. I tend to either make a goal way too unreachable Which or I way about too in the video. small. Which I warned about in the video as well. Right. But I need an example. Okay. So since this show is really focused on the business of creativity. Let's talk about your business goals. Of course, there are relationship goals that you want to have. Maybe there's some personal goals that you have, but for right now, just so we can get this in the next 20 to 30 minutes, let's focus on your business goals. All right, so the first thing I want to ask you is, how much revenue, revenue do you want to bring in a year? Are we talking? Revenue. I see that's okay. I mean, I could tell you oh, I want to bring in 200,000, but is that necessarily realistic and attainable? I don't know. What would you like? It's up to you. Everything is realistic and attainable if you're willing to put in the work, if you're willing to make certain sacrifices and you're willing to delay gratification. A lot of people tell me they want to achieve this and they want to do that kind of work and win these kinds of awards. Then they say, well, what are you doing on Saturday and Sunday? Well, I'm going to spend time with family. I got to go surfing and there's a picnic later that day, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What are you doing in the hours after work, after 7 or 8 p.m.? I'm eating dinner. I got to work out. So they're willing to give up nothing, but they want everything. That is entirely up to you. You can achieve anything you want. First, you have to visualize it, and then two, you have to be willing to put the work in to achieve those goals. So it's up to you. My goals are ginormous, but my work output is also you know, on par with my goals. Right? I want to grow the future into a $100 million company, and it's going to happen. That requires a lot of sacrifice and dedication, and a valuable lesson that my father taught me was you have all your time in your life to play put in the work today so you can enjoy it while you're still young. And I've followed that formula faithfully for most of my career. I don't plan on changing it now, okay? Mm -hmm. So how much money would you like to bring in? With that said, 100,000. 100,000, okay, so you have a revenue goal of 100,000, okay. So if we look at that and say, okay, there's a couple things that we can be doing. We can break this into quarterly goals which might make it easier, and I, I'm glad you picked $100,000 because the math is much, much easier for a simpleton like me. I know people on the internet are getting a little angry, like you guys don't know how to do basic math. We do know how to do basic math. One plus one equals four, I got it. Okay, so 100,000, let's break it into quarters. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we divide it by four. Mm -hmm. That's really easy, so your quarterly goal will be $25,000. 25, there's probably a graph that's gonna come up right here, Stuart. 25,000, okay? And so a quarter has how many months in it? A quarter has how many months in it? Yeah. Three. Three. We're so far, we're good with the math. So 25 divided by three. So we're going to overshoot that by a little bit. So 8,000 would put us at $24,000. So we need to do eight and a half. Does that get us there yet? Yes. Yeah. That gets us there. So we need to gross, not net, we need to gross 
$8,500 a month. Okay, what are you doing today? What am I doing today? In terms oh, of your revenue. Compared? Yeah, like I wanna know how far away that goal is for you. Um, hold on. Okay, go ahead. Really this is where really you'll mess gosh, up the map. The internet, if you wanna get mad, don't get mad at me. Get mad at Melinda. Don't get mad at either person, but better her than me. Currently where I'm at today, I am at 5,300 a month. 5,300, okay, so let's look at the spread. So if you did nothing t more today and you just kept your business as usual, you'd probably bring in about 5,000 bucks every single month, right? Mm -hmm. Or you actively have to hunt for that 5,000? No, it's so far in. it's been Referrals, coming in. Referrals, repeat business, so you're doing about five a month. So the spread here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna guesstimate a little bit on the higher side, you need to do, let's say $3,500 in new business. Why do I estimate high? I always like to estimate a little bit higher because then you won't fall short. So now you have to ask yourself, where will this $3,500 come from? Will it come from a single client? Will it come from a lot of little clients? What do you think? Well, now that I'm aiming for larger clients, it will be coming from larger clients. Okay, so the $3,500 will come from a single client somewhere. Yes. Okay, so we had talked about raising your rates, right? Yes. I think on the, another episode we were talking about logo design and you're doing about $5,000 for logo design. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do is charge, how, much, how many logos do you do a month? Um, barely one. Okay, currently. so let's just say one. Mm -hmm. Let's say one. If you do one logo a month and you're able to charge somewhere between eight to $10,000 per logo, you have hit your goal. Right. Okay. Does that make sense, guys? Everybody on the internet's following along. She needs to just raise her rates. I don't mean to say just, I'm sorry. To raise her rates from $5,000 to between eight to 10. Because somewhere in between there, she'll make her monthly goal. She'll be really happy and successful, okay? So eight to 10,000 bucks per logo. What's getting in your way right now of asking the next client that walks in the door for that kind of money? The fact that they haven't walked in the door. What do you mean? I haven't had a client. No new clients? Not in the past three weeks, month. Okay, so I've had a very positive impact on your <laughs> life, is what you're saying? Okay, so you guys have seen Melinda's site. She has credible, like credible body of work, right? And she's working on her case studies and she's going to build better messaging around the work that she's doing. She's going to document her process. She's building her social following and she's on a channel just like this. So more and more people are gonna find out about you. So now we just have to tell them that that's an old rate. We don't work at that rate anymore. And do you feel like you personally can say that? Like if a new client came knocking at your door like right now and they're like, hey, how much do you charge to do the work that you're doing? Would you be able to confidently say to them the price that we just talked about? I believe I could, especially because of the past few weeks that I've been upping my presentation in my work, that I'm now seeing the value of my work too, because I'm putting more time into it um, and thought and intention and I'm looking at it and like, mm -hmm. you know, that actually is worth that much. Mm -hmm. And so I think that I would feel confident coming in with that price. Okay. So let me just ask you this thought. As you're working on your case studies, what is the feeling that's inside your head? Can you articulate that? I'll tell you what I think as soon as you tell me what you think, but I want you to go first. Well, it, so far I've just been working on the mock-ups and the presentation right. of. So I haven't even dug into the actual case studies yet. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if I can articulate a feeling. Of you have to have a feeling. You feel I know, more I don't know if I'm able to articulate it. You feel more confident? Yes, more confident. I think excited about the work that I do. Okay. Um, because I've also had to not just present the work I've already done, but I also have to, some of it I had to design more. So uh -huh. I had to add to it. Um, so I think that got me excited just about design in general and about yep. the work that I do. Okay. So sometimes when I work on things that I haven't touched in a little while, I'll get this feeling of excitement. There's a thrill. And I was like, God, we've done a lot of really good work. And it pumps you up. It fills you with confidence. And that's something that you've overlooked. You've never spent the time to look at your own work. And sometimes the distance between the time in which you created and when you look at it again 
you're looking at it with much fresher eyes and you're looking at it a little bit more objectively and an odd thing happens. You can actually appreciate the work as if it were done by somebody else. So the more timid Melinda would have been, mm, it's worth like 5,000 bucks. It feels like too far away to ask for this kind of money. The new Melinda who's putting some polish into her work and her presentation can confidently go out there and say now, yeah, it's between eight to 10,000 bucks. How does that sound? And see what they say. So it seems like your, your goal of reaching your fin financial uh, goal, annual goal of $100,000 really is not that far away. Okay, so now we probably have to do something. What do we need to do? Well, so you started off first with the business goal of revenue. So would you say that is the most important goal one should have when making business goals? So that's the one you came in with first, so. What other goals are there? Well, like one I've been thinking about recently, which I think it does tie in with this, the revenue goal, but it's a way for me to get there is getting press or getting featured, getting awards. Right. So I think that's a smaller goal that would lead to, could potentially lead to a revenue increase. Yes. So that's the one I've been thinking about. Okay. What we want to do is be very clear about what the ultimate goal is. The ultimate goal could be to get um, boots on the ground, people in the door, to sell X number of widgets to people. Once we figure that out, the tactic on how to get there is then something we can work on. So doing press releases and doing case studies and all that kind of stuff is a tactic on how to get there. And we can't confuse the tactic with the goal. Right. Okay? Yeah. And I don't, look, the internet's going to get crazy on me because I'm probably not even using the terms correctly. But I like to say, like, okay, here's my financial goal in terms of how much we need to bill. Now let's put our heads together to figure out how we can get there. Okay, what we've realized is it's really not that far away for you to hit that. And if you were to do another project or a different service, you would get there to your goal really fast. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Okay, so just remind me to talk about other creative services that you can deliver that will help you out with your offerings and get your buildings up. Okay? So how do we get more clients in the door is really the question that comes next. Because you said sales are slow. There are not a lot of new opportunities walking in the door despite the fact that you're on this amazing channel. There's probably a sound effect there, okay? All right? <laughs> So it's hurt you, not helped you so far. <laughs> Yay, all right, the power of social media. And then what we need to do is to get you more known. You need to go to the client. Mm -hmm. Are you active on Behance? Now I am, yes. <laughs> since when? Since last week. <laughs> okay, so since last week. So that's not a great start, but right. that's okay. Meaning this should have been in development for a really long time. It takes a while to, for people to discover you. You've, you're not actively posting or sharing any of your work. It's still you doing logo breakdowns, right? Which is good. Now we have to figure out how to use all your other channels to start to put your work out there in a way that's valuable to somebody. And I think it's a mix. I think after you do enough education, you might fold in a couple of things about the work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't necessarily do it in the same way. I think you had some backlash because you broke down your own work and they're like, hey, don't try and trick us like, to say, look, your work is this amazing thing. I would just put still images of your best work as, um, as a layout, a spread or something with mock-ups and just put that in there and just clearly say, here's a little bit of my work. Okay? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You don't think that, that throws off the whole... No, because if you were to look at our feed, my feed personally, I throw in work that we've done. But you also have completely different campaign. I guess I have to look. Don't you have different sure. campaigns, though? Campaigns? What do you mean campaigns? Well, campaigns as word. in a group of images that are all around a certain thing, and then you switch. Yeah, OK. So look, I'm trying to showcase this on here. You can look at my feed. Go ahead. And you scrub through it. And then maybe you can ask me a question. So on our previous social media episode, Yes. We were talking about going deep into my logo studies. Yes. And I was thinking that I should do something more along these lines where I switch the focus right. to something else. Right. And that's what I was having a difficulty. But you're like, go deeper into what you're already doing. Go deeper into what you're doing. And what you're doing is providing value 
in, in the form of education and breaking it down, showing that you have a good eye. I think that's a broader theme. You can do a bunch of those things, and then you can switch gears, and then keep switching. That's really up to you, okay? Right now, nobody knows who, who you are, besides the people watching this channel right now. Nobody really knows who you are and the quality of the work that you do. And it's hard to get to you because you have to first find this on the channel, and then you have to click on the link, which some people do not even realize there's a whole description part. And then they click on that, and they may or may not go to you, and they might be busy, so they open it up in a tab, but then they don't spend any time on it. And most likely, the people who are going to click on that tab are other designers, they're not potential clients. Mm -hmm. So you got to go where the clients are. And right now, my best bet is put a lot more effort into putting your work on Behance. And then try to figure out where other people who have shared interest in the work that you do might feature you. Mm -hmm. Is there a blog? Is there a, a design competition or something that you can enter your work into so that other people can discover you organically? Okay. How are you doing in your SEO game? Um, not. Not existent? Mm, not existent. Okay. That's, that's a problem. So what we need to do is start to figure out what key words you want to be discovered for. And there's a whole art and science to that. We're not going to go into this. That's definitely an, an episode on SEO. Make yourself easy to find. Okay? But are there a handful of companies you can target? Can you do some kind of um, direct response thing um, where you're sending out a self-promotional self thing where you can get somebody to see your work and give you a shot at something? You might also look into opportunities where there are other design firms that need extra help. Mm -hmm. And they might be willing to work with you. So if there's a web company, maybe an advertising light agency, maybe you can then get some overflow work from them. And that's a term you can use, overflow, so that we know you have normal resources, in-house teams that you can work with. And if you find yourself in a situation where you need to find additional support, additional resources, please consider me. I love crafting beautiful marks. I'm affordable, I'm professional, and I'm very responsive. Okay? Yeah. Maybe they can send you some work. Helps. So you, now you need to figure out a marketing plan. So there's a lot of work you have to do. Mm -hmm. Quite honestly, there's a ton of work. Work on your case studies first. Put those case studies everywhere. Talk about them. Do micro content, meaning break your case studies down into little bite-sized pieces. Start to write on Medium or LinkedIn. Try to use the work that you do, not as a self-promotional thing, but as a byproduct of your thinking of your process. OK, that'll help. Expand your creative services beyond what you're doing right now. So if I were to call you Ring Ring, Melinda, what do you do? What kind of services do you offer? What would you tell your client today? Branded identity, packaging, print, business naming. And I shy away from web design because I have, because I don't personally do it and I haven't worked well I haven't worked with a web designer yet, so it's the lack of experience that causes me to not. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw you a bone right now. Anybody that's watching this video, if you're a web developer and you do amazing work and you need to partner up with a really good designer, highly recommend you go out to Melinda's site. It's marksandmakers.com. Marksandmaker. Marksandmaker.com. It's all spelled out, no weird characters, marksandmaker.com. All right, go check her out. So you need to probably collaborate with some people. Because there are a lot of developers out there that need really good design services and who's got a brand name. Okay, Build those relationships now so that when the web work comes in, you'll have a partner to team up with that you won't be scrambling at the last minute to find. Mm -hmm. I've said before, every business in America today, every business in the world, I think, needs to have three things. A strong identity, social media marketing, and a, and a website. You are basically covering one of those three things. It'd be nice if you covered two or three. So they don't have to go and find additional people to do the other parts of the puzzle. OK? Mm -hmm. OK. What else do we need to talk about then? So other ways or strategies to reach that, that revenue goal. So getting known and yes. being able to be found by my clients. Um, by the case studies, by Behance, SEO, self-promotion. Um, so 
I have all these great things that I can do. Now, what is most important to like breaking it down? You know, if we're breaking it down to the funnel, we have the hundred thousand dollar revenue goal. Yes. Um, so then just breaking all those things down that I need to do to reach that goal. Cause right now I see all of it and it's all before me at the same importance. So okay. then I get overwhelmed and I don't know which one to do first. So prioritize it. Is there one that's most important out of all those things? Yeah. So what you're gonna do is you can okay, let's let's try this right now. Can you draw this while I say this? Okay, in your notebook. You're gonna I think it's a three column grid. Let me think. Yeah, I think it's a three column grid. Column one, it's wider than the rest, and it's the activity, right? Whatever you're gonna do, okay? You're gonna list them. So you can talk about posting your work on Behance. SEO for your site, enter competitions, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, you just go down the list. Write down every single thing that you think you need to do as a tactic to achieve your goals. All right. And then the next two columns are much skinnier, and we'll put them to the far right. And it was something like this impact. Okay, you write out impact. And the next column will be urgency. Okay, this is a prioritization exercise as part of the core kit. And we do something like this, it sounds a little different, but then you would rate each one from a score of one to 10 or one to five, depending on what you want. So if it's gonna have a lot of impact on your business, you would rate it five. Low impact, it would be one, okay? Now urgency is like, I need to do this now because this is gonna be a bottleneck for everything. So the items that get the highest scores are the ones that you have to do first. And so what you can do is just circle the top three things with the highest scores and focus on that. What if I don't know how to score them? Well, let's, let's try it right now. So have you, have you done the list yet? So read, read to me what you have on your list. So, so far, Behance, SEO, case studies, collaboration, and I would put specifically Instagram. Instagram, what else? Uh, uh, design competitions. Okay, enter design competitions, okay. And getting featured on blogs. Write. Write, write your own blog. Write an article. I do. It's just very slow. Okay. But I do. Well, just write it all down. Okay. You, the, the point of the activity is just to write down as many things that you can think of. Is it somewhere in there a self-promotional item? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. okay. Um, part of this should be appointment setting. Like you're going you're gonna to make it a point to have lunch with somebody uh, once a week. If you're more ambitious than that, say twice a week. Okay. Maybe you need to go on some podcasts. You got to get known, is the thing. Okay? Mm -hmm. So then what we would do is we would score it now. So what's the first cat column? Urgency uh, or impact? Impact. Okay, so what's going to have the biggest impact on your business? Okay? So let's go from one to 10 or one to five. What do you prefer, one to five or one to 10? One to five. Okay, one to five. So what's the first item? It looks to me that case studies are. Well, no, just what's the first well, item? Oh, Literally, first item. what's oh, the first okay. item on the list? Behance. Behance. What kind of impact is that going to have on your business? One to five. I don't know. How do, how do I rate, how do I know what to rate that? What's your best educated guess? Uh, four. Okay. Well, I've told most people who watch this channel, the number one thing you have to do is get on Behance. So I would rate that a five. Okay. So four is not bad. All right, so keep going. Go SEO. down your list. SEO. What kind of impact is that going to have on your business? If it's done really well, it could have a big impact. Okay. If it's not done that well, then it would have two or three. Okay. Now we're in the creative space and you're moving up in terms of the tier in which you're building. Typically, people just don't find you on a blind search. Okay. In certain other industries, SEO is very, very important. Okay. I don't know if that's as important as you might feel like it is on a gut level. So this is where some, some more senior business person like myself could come in and say, this is what's worked for us. It might be different for you, but I would rate that maybe a three or even a two for right now, okay? Mm -hmm. Because people that search on the internet, graphic designer in Orange County, I mean, they're, they're like scraping the bottom. Mm -hmm. They're looking for a deal. They're looking for a $50 logo. They're, they're coming to you unqualified and they know nothing about you. Okay, so that's gonna be a problem. Until you become a thought leader in the space, SEO is not gonna be that helpful to you. 
And so we would go down and score the rest. Which Case what other? studies. Case studies. How important are case studies to you? I feel that's a five. It's a five. Got that one right. Uh, collaboration, um, a four. What does that mean, collaboration? Collaboration, say, with a web designer or another a web designer or um, someone who does social media. Okay. It's helpful if you write your list as an action item. So when you say collaboration, I don't know what that means. Okay. So put it into something that you can go do. What is it that you're going to go do? That I can collaborate with or talk to one person, not talk to one person, but find one person that I could potentially collaborate with. Okay, or find people or build up the, the list, the, the, act, the activity should be build a database of external resources or something like that. And the list will include developers, designers, 3D people, illustrators, whatever it is. So that's an ongoing activity. So how much of an impact will that have on your business to find additional resources? I think that's a four or a five. Okay, I would put it at a two and I'll tell you why. Ooh. When you find them, if they give you work right away, it'll be high impact. But until you can connect all the dots and parts and pieces, if you're getting no work, the collaboration will give you nothing, right? Because you're gonna send them work initially. You might get lucky and somebody might actually hire you as you're reaching out to them. I, I don't know if that's the case. Okay? Mm -hmm. Does that help you to understand like how to rate these things now? Yes. Okay. Then you can do the rest on your own. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to the top. Now we're going to do urgency. Okay? Five is like you got to do it right now. One is it can wait. So obviously you want to avoid the things that can wait that have low impact on your business. That makes total sense. Things that can't wait that's going to have a big impact on your business, do now. And you're just going to tackle the top three things. All right? That's how you do it. So here's the thing. Anytime you want to go do something and you have to make a decision about whether or not you should pursue this path or this path, you try to make some kind of criteria. Now, do you remember in high school when you had the pros and cons, when you're on a debate team or any decision you have to make, why should you go and date Johnny? Uh, he's really nice to me, he's a really handsome boy. You go to all the pros and the cons, uh, he's lied to me before, he's not always reliable, his future is in question. And the pros and cons, you look at it, you make a decision. So you don't have to use these criteria that I gave you, but they're helpful. So let's, let's review the criteria. Now I want to add one more into the criteria to help you guys basically be a better decision maker in terms of what you should and shouldn't pursue. And here's the beauty of it, if you do this for yourself, Guess what? It works for your clients as well. Okay? So whatever activity you want to do, that's column one. Column two is impact. How much of an impact is this going to make measured against your goal? The goal was really important. Okay? So a goal wasn't to become famous. It wasn't to be liked or popular. It was to hit $100,000 in revenue. The next is urgency. Do we need to do this right now or can this wait? Some things will have a lot of impact, but it can wait. So obviously you want to do the things that are going to have a big impact towards your goal and that you need to do right now. And chances are you might hit like a tiebreaker, okay? And the, the fourth column that you're going to add is money. What kind of budget needs to be allotted for this to happen? Some activities are free. Building some case studies, I would say that's a $1 sign because you might buy some mock-ups. You might take, take some pictures so there's some time, materials, and expenses. So I would do it. I would put a dollar sign next to that. I do this as a relative measure, not as an absolute. I'm not saying $4 equals $1 sign or $25 equals $4 signs, but just in relative to each other, how many dollar signs? So you can do one to five dollar signs. So something that's gonna require you to hire more people, spend real money, hundreds of thousands of dollars, whatever it is, that's gonna be a four dollar sign endeavor. You can probably hire an SEO team to take care of this right now. So sometimes when you talk about urgency and impact, those are both really important, but the low dollar rate, hire somebody to do that. That's a way to do it. Okay? Does this help you? Yes. Okay. It does. All right. Let's keep going then. What else are we talking about? Um okay, so now let's bring tie this back into the focus sheet cuz that's where this mm. whole conversation for me started. Right. Uh, when you mentioned the focus sheet and I thought, well, I can have a focus sheet, but then if it's not going towards a specific goal, then it's worthless. 
right? Okay. Because the things on your focus sheet, I think, should line up with your goals so that you're moving yes. forward um, and not just busy and getting nowhere. Mm -hmm. So now can we tie these things in? So we're, we're getting, you know, the funnel's getting smaller and smaller with what now I have to do on a daily basis. So transferring this now to a focus sheet. Okay. So you're good to go? I, no? I don't know. What's holding you back? Why the hesitation? Because even with all, so I pick the three things, say that I'm going to focus on, right? Yes. So then am I focusing on all those three things at once? Like doing something, doing something for Behance, a case study, and reaching out to collaborate with someone all at the same time as in the same day. So those three things okay. are going to be on my focus sheet? Nope, nope, nope. Okay. Okay. So when you break it, break it down to these are the three things you need to be doing. Until you accomplish that, you're not going to do other things. So new ideas may pop up like, oh, I want to build a toy. You're like, mm, not right now. Oh, this is a great barbecue I'm going to go to. My friend, mm, not right now. Okay. So you're going to drill that down into weekly or daily goals and things that you need to do. Okay. In order to find and build up a database of collaborators to work with, this is an ongoing endeavor. So you could prioritize your morning. Every single morning, you're going to send out 10 emails. You're going to surf websites that have a directory of resources for 30 minutes a day. And you're just going to budget time against that. And if you map out your day, you're going to find that you're going to be a high-performing engine really fast because there's no more doubt anymore as to what you need to do. Sometimes when we're left to our own devices, and this is a common problem with entrepreneurs, solopreneurs who are working from home or a small studio, is they come into the office and lots of things distract them. There's a sale going on at Toys R Us or Barney's or REI, and you're like, nah, I gotta check it out. That's when your focus sheet tells you, you can check it out after you finish all these things, or when you take a break, but not before then, and then you just bang it out. I always found, oddly enough, when I was in college, that I'm, I'm really good at design, but then when I had a friend and we were collaborating on a project together, we got twice or three times as much work done. Not because we were both working on a machine, more that I would show him something, he's like, that's really cool, and what about this? And then we would make decisions really fast. We're holding each other accountable, and we we're going to waffle all over the place. We knew we needed to get a job done, and having an extra set of eyes and ears to look at the work meant that we can make decisions faster. You can use this prioritization exercise as your fake imaginary friend. I'm not saying you don't already have imaginary friends, but make room for one more. So just expanding on that slightly, we have the ongoing things that I will be doing every day that will show up on the focus sheet every day. But then say I have um, two things that are of equal impact, equal urgency, they, they're neck and neck, you know, everything's equal. Then do I just pick one, one of those two things? Or do both. Or do both. Well, you could reevaluate how you're scoring each one. So an initial pass, maybe they're the same. But now you have to make a decision because both are hard to do, let's say. You have to then go back and rescore those things and say, well, now that I have two things pitted against each other, I can score it a little bit more granularly. Okay? Now for me, I just bang through and try to do as much as I can but I make a lot of sacrifices for that. I'm not saying you have to. You have to make that determination. How bad do you want something? Or can it wait? A lot of ways to skin that cat, as they say. So with a, a couple of the things that are ongoing but not as impactful, mm -hmm. do you, should I just wait on even starting on those things? And go for the things that have a higher impact right now? Like say it made the top three. Yep. But there are still a couple other things that are more important. Like four or five? Yeah. Okay. So do I just budget less time each day for that ongoing thing, or do I push it off and begin it when a couple other things are done? All right, let me say a couple things about this. When you have a checklist, a daily checklist, and when you do things, nothing feels better than crossing something off your list. It's a visible measurement that you're making progress. Few of us can say, oh, I'm getting fitter or uh, I'm, I'm growing tall, because these are like imperceptible differences in, in what, what happens. That's why all 
people who are really into sports and fitness, they keep a diary, their workout journal, they write how they feel, they take all their measurements and they're monitoring every calorie they eat because they want to see a difference. Because it is a grind. It is a grind to go into the gym. It's a grind to be eating the same meals over and over again and to stick to some religious routine. It's rough. And the only thing that you can do is to have some kind of objective measure. And so checking it off the list is an addictive feeling and it's a feeling that has, as far as I know, no negative consequences. You do it, you feel great. You just keep doing it. And you're going to realize you're going to be able to do more in less time. And you're going to become more and more focused, more and more productive and efficient each and every single day. Okay? At some point, you're going to have to say, I've got to open it up to do the things that are really impactful but not as urgent. I'm going to start tackling those. Maybe I can start to schedule my week differently. I can open it up. Okay? Now, here's the weird part. As you do things, new things flood in. So you're constantly reshuffling and reorganizing. So you may want to do a recalibration exercise every three, four weeks. At the end of each month, you review what's happened in the month. Have we gotten to our goals? What did we do well? What could we do better? Those are things that you want to do. Okay? Mm -hmm. are, we, are we good with this? Yeah. Anything else you want to ask me? About this no, specific thing? No, about this. I think we covered it. All right. So let me just throw it back, you guys. Hopefully, this was 30 minutes or so. And we're trying to keep these a little bit more concise. And if you guys have any questions, hit me down below. Melinda's going to do the recap as to the things that she needs to do. And she's going to take us home. Well, I will be shooting for my overall goal of $100,000 in revenue. And to get there, I'm going to list out the things that would get me there in a strategy by listing out the activity, the impact, the urgency, and the budget for each of those things. And then picking the three most important of those and moving forward with those every day and put them on my focus sheet. Great. If you want to be able to accomplish any goal in your life, you have to be able to define it and then you devise a tactic to achieve it and hold yourself accountable. So as we've said in the other video on how to achieve your goals, take a big goal and keep chopping it down until you know day by day, moment by moment, what the heck you should be doing. And with that, it'll help you filter out everything else. And if you do this religiously, you're going to find that your efficiency, your happiness, your productivity is going to go through the roof. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. See you guys next time. All right, guys, I know some of you guys are thinking we never talked about these additional creative services that Melinda could do to potentially build more. We've been focusing mostly on the logo thing, and I asked her to remind me to tell her all the other kinds of services that she could provide for more money. Let's talk about some of those things for those of you guys that hung around after the credits. So let's talk about it. Are you charging or any clients to do strategy right now, to do discovery? No. Okay. So we talked about having some kind of diagnostic process and some kind of framework. You need to develop one that is valuable to your client. It could be called a brand audit or do something like that. You can do a social media scorecard for them. We've been thinking about something like that. And you could scrape their content and understand here's where you're good at. And we've, we've looked at BuzzSumo. Here's how you rank on these keywords. You need help with your SEO because what keywords are you targeting? There's lots of other creative services that you can provide. What you need to know to be able to sell these services is like this much more information than the client. Because they know this much, you know this much, you can sell it. And what you can do is you're in part of the pro group. There's a lot of people there that can do this work. You just go sell the services. So you leverage the relationships and the knowledge, and you go out and sell it. And they'd be happy to, to do it with you, do it for you, et cetera. Okay? Mm -hmm. So here's how you do it. Here's the approach, you guys. You just ask them. Let's talk about, say, one, one person or a company in particular in the pro group, Tina and Will from Highlight. They're SEO people. We've used them. We love them. Other people in our group have used them and love them as well. All you have to do is call up Tina and Will and say, I would like to sell the services that you provide to my clients. Tell me what you do. Tell me how you do it. Send me a deck. Tell me the prices in which you like to charge. Tell me what I need to watch out for. What kind of questions are the three most common questions they're going to ask? And beyond that, I'm going to say, you need to talk to Tina and Will. And you could repeat that formula for everybody in the group that has a highly specialized skill that doesn't do what you do. See how you make money there? Mm -hmm. mm. OK, that's one thing. Another thing that you can do is you can design keynote decks. If people are raising capital, 
if they're doing a big presentation, they're going to pay you money to design their deck. And designing the deck isn't that hard. Okay, as a service you can provide, it's something that we do, and I think we're going to raise our rates on this. But we've been doing it for ten thousand dollars per keynote deck. Now we do more than just design it. We're kind of figuring out the messaging and how to structure the deck so that we achieve a goal. But that's the base price, and I think we need to charge fifteen to twenty thousand dollars to do that. You could be designing catalogs, brochures. You can be designing social media banners and things like that for individuals. I'm not talking about banner ads, but in terms of their avatar and the header image and maybe how they post social media. You can give them a template. You can design email blast templates. People need that. They need greater consistency, more dynamic visuals, and a design palette that they can roll out in a lot of different things. Those are some additional creative services. You can create really short animated videos. There's a market for that. Okay. They don't have to be high production TV commercials, but just to make something move and post it as a video content on Facebook gets it viewed a lot more than a static image. You know that. And again, you don't have to learn how to do that. You can hire somebody to do it. And if you want to do it and you think, what's the cost effective way of doing this? There are a lot of templates that you can buy, design it, um, tailor it for your client, change up the colors and the fonts, and then turn around something that's really simple for them. Make a turnkey solution for them. Okay, so you can deliver more things, be, become more versatile in the deliverables that you create. So with these extra creative services, is this something that I would be communicating on my site or would it, you know, in the things that I post, say on social media and whatnot, or is this something that I would be, once I talk to the client and see what their needs are, that's when I would introduce these things? What you could do is you could list it as services, additional services that you provide, so at least you're going to get some SEO benefit from that. I would not spend a lot of time building case studies about that kind of stuff because that's distracting you from your primary task at hand. I think at the very top of the creative services that you can provide is to do strategy for them. And then the deliverables come in all forms. And that's when you would introduce this concept like, I'm curious, who, do you have a big presentation coming up? Do you need a keynote deck design? I'm like, oh yeah. Or that can be part of your expanded services after you've done the identity design. To say, look, typically clients ask for this, this, and that. Do you need any of this? Do you need any signage for your next event? Because you can do that. Do you need, um, what else can we think of? Um, well, you had already mentioned brochures, layouts, books. Um, Anything that needs a design or yeah. message, you could do. Yeah. And you should do. Okay? Mm -hmm. That way, hitting this number shouldn't be that hard for you. It's a very realistic goal. As soon as you get close to that, I'm going to challenge you to go to 450. But I don't want to overwhelm you with that kind of goal. All right. Thanks for tuning in for the bonus segment. You guys, see you guys next time. <laughs>